Welcome back, Acron fans, to round four of the Losers Bracket of the 2013 Christmas Tournament. For Acron, of course. I am Shadow Fury 33, presenting the tournament. And let's see. Like I said, we are on round four Monkey versus Kitan. So, yeah, Kitan won against Shardon. Congratulations to Kitan, though, admittedly, it does mean we don't get the champion of Vekir Dream Match. That would have been Monkey versus Shardon. Instead, we get to see how Monkey deals with Kitan, because Shardon put up a really good fight. And Monkey is probably the best Vekir, but. And we can't we can't really test between Monkey and Shardon in this tournament, but we can test between who beats Kitan or who holds up against Kitan better, or possibly who beats Kitan, because that's really the only measuring stick we have at the moment. First match is going to be on Overgrown Citadel, and that'll be starting right now. Monkey is on the east side of the map, and Kitan on the west side. Monkey, of course, is Vekir. Kitan, of course, is Grekum. And Overgrown Citadel is, of course, very small, so I expect I expect much rushing to happen. However, it could be wrong. Last time we saw Overgrown Citadel, it was actually about a 20-minute game with mid-game economy from both players. This map is unpredictable. It's it's a weird map sometimes. However, it looks like Kaiden is definitely concerned about getting hit by an early rush, so he's going for early Octopod. Not a bad idea. Monkey, on the other hand, is. Looks like he's attacking with everything. In fact, he might be going for a proxy. The thing is, this is game one on a very rush-heavy map, so I would be surprised if it lasted longer than five minutes. Like, this is the sort of map where, like I said, you rush. It's small. But also, it's game one. Game one, you do silly things, because you have game two and three if you need them. But game one, if you lose, you don't lose the tournament, so you're in. But game two, you have to be careful. Whoever won game one can still do crazy things, but whoever lost is going to be kind of bound to not dying. So, game one's the only game we really have total freedom. However, Kitan will be able to deflect this attack fairly well with the infantry. The Octopus is up, and for good reason. However, is Monkey going to build some foundations? That's really the question here. And it looks like he's not... Well, we're not focusing on point of time. Focusing on his point of view, is he going to build foundations? He's pausing in, and it looks like he might, but he lost his Iron Beer. That is pretty big. That Zion Veer is his best asset. It looks like he's just going to try to scout. He's not even going to try to fight. Just going and seeing what he can see, what Kitan is up to. Knowing that Kitan is going for a bit more economy than just the starting three RPs. See, is he going to try to build up from here? It looks like Monkey. I mean, he has a chance. He could build up from there. He could go and get another RP, build a depot from there, and start building some basic vehicles. Not sure if he's going to do that. He does know, however at least a little bit of what Kitan is up to, and likely to echo out this attack as well. I doubt he's going to try to go for a Foundation Rush. I mean, he might, I just doubt it. Okay, Zion Veer staying home, Shin and Teth Veer still going out, trying to scout out again. Just keeping tabs on what Kitan is up to. Yeah, he is definitely going to be going for... Make sure it's going on... Oh, by the way, I mentioned in the previous series that there was this accidental too early fix for like a crystal harvesting. As you can see, it is not the case anymore. This game is played with the stock ver okay, I'm actually playing with the stock version of 1611. So, if it starts to desync, then we'll know that I was wrong, but I did talk to to the host of this and well, Catalyte hosted it. He doesn't have the mod as far as I know, so he was playing stock 1611. So, this is there's nothing different from here and 161160, but the previous game got a little bit weird because there was just that much more LC for everyone to have. Or at least you got it quicker. This game, however, is more normal. This is not any weird balance experiment that accidentally got snuck into the tournament. It's something that... It's more normal. It's the balance that we expect. Though admittedly, that fix is a good thing. It's just... We didn't play the tournament from the beginning with that. I mean, 1620 will have that fix incorporated in the stock game, so it'll be fine. It's just 1611 doesn't. Which I kind of admit, I'm actually kind of, <laughs> I'm actually honestly kind of surprised when I think about it. Like, 162, like, that's an, it's going to be what, 25 some odd patches that this game has had? That's actually, that's really good support. Gotta say, I mean, it's not obviously the best support you could possibly have since, well, that requires infinite patches, but still, that's, gotta say, that's pretty impressive. Like, kudos for the devs for supporting it that long. But, at any rate, the, of course I say that and I sound kind of self-congratulatory in, in a sense. 
regardless, 1611 still has the LC harvesting bug. So both players, okay, Monkey is going for depot. He is going for a 130 depot. This is still fairly early, and like I said, it's not not quite the five minute mark yet. I am not surprised yet. But Kaiden does have the Octopod. He does go for the attack with the Octopod, and that Octopod is going to be well, gonna get rid of the imagery, no problem. The Zion Pulsar, one Zion Pulsar, the Depot Heal is gonna be the trump card. That's the thing. When you're attacking the Vecure in their base, they have their Depot, the Depot can heal. That Depot Heal is pretty much unstoppable if they have chrono, chrono Energy to use it with. You pretty much have to attack inside the Unplayable Pass in order to have a chance to kill their Depots, or kill their vehicles. And there goes that Zion Pulsar. And we will see Monkey pop it back into the depot once he gets the chance. Or once he needs to, I should say. And there it goes. He's going to... Oh, okay. He jumped back a little bit. But he's going to pop into the depot. And there it goes. Into the depot once again. So there's... The only easy way to get rid of that is to kill the depot outright. If you can kill the depot, then you don't have to worry about it. If you can kill the unit near the unplayable past edge, like within the unplayable past, it also works. But if it's anywhere near the playable past, if they have chrono energy with which to do it, that depot is going to be used for healing units. Always. In other words, don't attack Vekir at home. Attack them when they're out. Or, if you attack them at home, make sure you can kill that depot before it does too much to you. So, both players are starting to go for more of a mid-game. Their rushes have neither of them panned out. Though Monkuki is going for still an early attack, but... Yeah, we've been playing this for about six minutes, so I am now thoroughly surprised and cannot contain my shock at knowing that this game has lasted beyond five minutes. <gasps> okay, that's enough. That's enough shock for one game. So, since both players have failed their rushes, they are going to be trying to push... Probably going to be trying to push aggressively, though. They're still going to be likely building some units, still trying to attack as much as possible, find any holes their opponents might have. Given the size of this map, you got to make sure that if your opponents are making any mistakes that you capitalize on them and that you do not yourself make mistakes your opponents can capitalize on. Which really comes down to knowing what your opponent is up to because the mistakes are largely contextual. I mean, for example, if Monkuki goes heavy on Octopods and Kitan builds some Teth Pulsers, that'd be a mistake because he'd expect the Kitan would go for... Sorry, other way around. If Kitan... <laughs> if Monkuki goes heavy on Pharopods, then there's something seriously broken with this game. But that's not going to happen. Kitan, however, if he goes heavily on air units then those Teth Pulsers would be fine for Monkuhi, hypothetically. But if he goes heavy for Octopods, they wouldn't be. So it's very much contextual. One example of many. And right now, however, Kaiden is definitely being aggressive. He's definitely making sure that he's keeping Monkuhi honest. And Monkuhi, on the other hand, is... Well, he is having to respond to this. I mean, he did actually not respond in time to save that Zion Pulsar. He can rebuild it, and he has done so, but that's still more money he didn't have to spend. He could have depot healed for free, and he has no QP income, by the way. Kitan does. Kitan is actually healthier for economy. 5 LC, 2 QP, compared to 6 LC. Monkuki is playing for a slightly later game than Kitan is. Just slightly, but he is definitely playing for more RPs than he is playing for quicker units, or quicker unit production. Two Zion Pulsers running into Monkuki's base, sorry, Kitan's base, and Kitan has reefs. Kitan has a pair of reefs. Those reefs have enough energy to heal up pretty effectively. However, reefs are not depots. They do not instantly heal a thing without it being attacked. So it can be more effectively dealt with by simple application of a greater firepower. Not to mention reefs do have the energy cost to them. So it's a little bit harder to make it work. But even then, the Zion Pulses are taking a lot of damage. Kind of, however, he's... Wow, he's actually taking a lot of damage to this. The reefs are healing up fairly well. One of the reefs is half energy. The other reef is still doing okay. And advanced structures is being built, so air units will be coming up shortly. Now, Monkuki, this is where he needs to start getting up anti-air or getting up... Well, possibly. It might be domes, in fact. Kitan may, in fact, go for domes. May not go for air. Knowing Kitan, he will go for air, but... This map... Weird things happen in this map. It could be domes. It probably won't be. It, it, there's a far... Yeah, it's gonna be... It's gonna be a spire. It's gonna be air units. It's always air units. Except when it's domes. And it's Kitan, so it's not gonna be a domes. It's gonna be air units. Monkuki... Able to actually escape... Well, we'll see. Looks like he's able to escape with the Zion Pulsar. At least for now. Kitan, not gone for chronoporting. Not likely to get chronoporting anytime soon. And Monkuki is building up more RPs. This is what I meant by playing for the mid-game. Playing for the point where he's able to get just that much more RP... Or LC income from these RPs. From the extra RP to be able to build more RPs 
than Kitan could in the same amount of time. And at this point, Kitan has had these RPs a lot longer, so he's actually gotten more resources out of them. It's going to take a little while for Monkey to catch up. Probably about five or so gathering cycles, I think. Possibly as much as ten. So that's going to be about two minutes. If the game lasts another two minutes, Monkey will be... Well, either player will be quite fortunate or well defended. More Zion Pulsars coming up, however, and this is actually going to be a bit harder, once again, for Kitan to deal with. But Kitan is getting a Farabod. He's going to have no problems with this. Bit harder for him to deal with on the ground, but he's not worried about the ground anymore. And Monkuki is unfortunately insufficiently worried about the air, or at least in insufficiently worried about dealing with air. Clearly not aware that Kitan was going for the spire, and admittedly he didn't see it, but he, did, he should have been able to hear the production, hear that research. And admittedly, this timing, like I said, you can pretty much assume it's going to be air. Building the octopods would be a surprising thing in order to counter those test pulsers, but. Building air? Not at all surprising. However, Monkey apparently not predicting this and going in for an attack. He's going to get hit by the Farpod. Well, there we go. Jumping back to when the Farpod actually exists. Going to get hit by it hard. Able to get rid of the ground forces, though, but not that Farpod. That Farpod is going to do him in if he's not careful. Of course, he's aware of it now. Getting Zion Turchers, not getting Teth Pulsers, not getting Shin... Well, he can't get Shin Turchers. Not getting Shin Veer, mind you. So, no detectors at the moment. All he can really do is try to get these guys through and... Hope that Zion Churchers with their cloak will be able to just bypass the Farpod completely. Of course, Sepipods. Sepipods exist, and they are detectors. Not to mention Arcticuses are detectors. Or the Articai. The Articus is a detector. Articus detects, and Sepipods detect, and Faros detect, and all of them are in this base. So the Zion Churchers really have no chance. The best they can do is the fact that they can, in fact, hit air. That's all they really have going for them. And that is, in fact, something that Monkey will now take advantage of. The fact that they can hit air, and they are not half bad at doing so. Kitan, on the other hand, is he going to try to deal with this? It looks like, yes, he is able to successfully deal with this, getting rid of that foundation, and keeping a Sepipod in there as well. The Sepipod, I mean, it does help a bit, but now there is a Shin Veer in play, and that Shin Veer, able to help out, able to detect that Farpod well enough. The Farpod must run away, and Monkuki does not give chase, keeping inside his own base. Just to build up, like I said, he was building up for the mid to late game. Well, yeah, mid game at this point. This is the nine minute mark so far. He is building up for the mid to late game. And Kitan, on the other hand, is also doing the same. Though Kitan, not so much for economy. Kitan's actually, I think, slightly behind in terms of economy. Let's see, 73, 88 compared to 75, 79. No, it's about the same. Both players have. So, Monkuki has caught up in terms of economic development, although he's slightly ahead in LC. Titan is behind in LC and about on par in Q Plasma. So really it's a question of what Monkuki does with this. Admittedly, Vecker does need a lot of resources to build units. They're, their units are quite expensive. Don't get me wrong, but still, Aerial Control Center and then from there building up whatever he needs. That's going to be the big thing. Now Kitan, on the other hand, let's see what he has gotten going from. He is getting more and more resource processors and he is attacking as well. Going for another attack and Monkuki has moved forward. He is going to be trying to deal with this, getting one of the Zion Turchers cloaked, the other one not quite so cloaked. And there we go, that Zion Turcher is cloaked. Teth Pulsar coming in to help out, but that Teth Pulsar is a little bit late, unfortunately. Both Zion Turchers down! Both Zion Turchers are down! That is... Well, that is useless. I mean, there's no way the Zion Turchers could be useful. They, they are down. That Teth Pulsar really should have come in sooner, but unfortunately it did not. And I think Monkuki has pretty much dropped the ball in this one. More Teth Pulsars coming in, but at this point, the main base getting heavily attacked. These Zion Pulsars will do what they can to help out, but they really cannot do much. And the Farapod about to finish off everything here. This Depot not going to help too much. The Foundations will help. The Teth Pulsars will help a bit, but the Depot could easily be knocked down in a hurry. I'm a little bit surprised the Zion Pulsars are the main target, but I suppose the fact that the Autobots can get rid of the Teth Pulsars is probably why. And Kitan, from his point of view, slightly ahead is, as far as you can tell, dealing enough damage to make a difference. Now, Monkey, from his point of view, has jumped back at the Impossible Past Edge, trying to do everything he can to keep himself alive. But I think this game may be a bit of a lost cause for him. He might want to just want to move on to game two, save his energy, because he has lost everything he can use. Like, he has money to rebuild, and he is doing what he can to do so, but he has no way out of this easily. Building out of Test Pulsar is trying to use that. To deal with this and not gonna be enough one at a time. 
Able to get rid of the Firepod, however. The Semipod still a threat, but the Firepod is gone. The Octopod, not yet gone. But more Firepods are coming. I mean, Kaiden has another Firepod Semipod pair. He has another, yet another Firepod coming on top of that. And even then, the Semipods are actually able to deal quite a bit of damage to the Depot. That Depot is going to go down. And with it, Monkuki's chance of winning Game 1. He still has Game 2, though. And if he wins that, then Game 3. But Game 1 has escaped him. I'm afraid. I am kind of surprised he didn't go for anti-air sooner. I, I really am surprised. I wonder if he has been playing that economy... Oh, no, he's playing the economy mod. He'd actually have been making anti-air even sooner at the, by the 4-minute mark. But, no, he surprisingly focused heavily on ground, and I'm a little bit surprised at that. I think he was trying to go for a rush, but, yeah, I don't know. That's really not that useful. And, and this is it. This is Kitan's final attack. He's trying to get rid of the... Well, he's getting rid of the Zion Pulses, no problem. Needs to get rid of this Foundation to stop the detection, and that Teth Pulsar can't do anything without detection help. No Shin Veer, no Shin Turtle. I think Monkey is kind of off his game. I'm a little bit surprised he's not... Well, okay, he has very little Chrono Energy, so that's probably what it is. That really is what it is. He doesn't have the Chrono Energy. He's using a lot of it on Foundations. Not surprising compared to Shin Beer, and the thing is you can't easily build an aerial control center while under attack in order to get Shin Turchers. So I'm not sure what Monkey really has to do at this point. This is it. This, like I said, this is game. Though it lasted about 15 minutes, or almost 16 minutes, actually. Once again, another o long overgrown Citadel game from players who really couldn't rush each other down. More foundations have come up, and it looks like this Teth Pulsar will actually have a bit of a chance. But not the Depot. Nope, the Depot is going down. No, the Teth Pulsar is down. There's no way out of this. Zion Pulsar trying to help. It was out of range enough to sort of help, but that is it. Monkuki with... Oh. Can't control the foundation healing, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's... <laughs> not helpful at all, but it doesn't really matter. Monkuki has... He's too much against the wall. He really needs to save his energy for game two. Because that's what this is going to, is game two. Kaiten with one win under his belt, and Monkuki having to get games two and three in order to win. Will he be able to do so? We'll find out once this game is finished. Although Monkuki still fighting to the nail, still trying to get a depot up, still not not throwing in the towel yet. Getting more foundations. He has the R he has the LC for it. And he has the resources, but at this point he doesn't have the resources to follow up. Like, there's no way for him to follow up from here in order to stay alive. And actually, Veer Class is being built, really just burning his LC, and the depot has no way of being used from here on out. Titan has this game, and Mongookie is going to GG any second now. Any second now. Well, okay, eventually. There we go. That's it. That's the surrender. Kitan has the game, and we are on to game two. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up shortly. Welcome back, Acron fans, to match two of round four of the Losers Bracket of the 2013 Acron Christmas Tournament. I am Shadow 33 bringing you the second game between Monkuki and... Yeah, it was game two of round four. Monkuki and Kaiten. So, game one was on Overgrown Citadel. It lasted 15 minutes because that's what happened when evenly matched players fight on that map. And Kaiten eventually won just overpowering Monkuki by basically scissor advantage. He just had air against Zion Balsers, and that worked. We're now we're on to Tomb of Heroes, and Tomb of Heroes is a much more economy-focused map. You expect that you're going to have the focus that you that we saw in Overgrown Citadel, except it's going to be a bit less tense. Players are going to have more time to prepare, more room to expand. Although we did see Kitan manage this map very well last time we saw him in just Game 3 of the previous series. See if he managed to reproduce that, so we shall begin. Kitan in the west side of the map, Monkuki in the east side of the map, or sorry, Kitan in the east side of the map, Monkuki in the west side of the map, and Monkuki is going to be, well, going for Vek here, Kitan going for Grekum, and Kitan not worried about an early rush, he is going for all RPs on LC, none of them on QP, not worried about getting that early Octopod, Monkuki is 
probably not going to go for an early Q Plasma RP. I don't see why I'd go for an early Depot Rush, especially given that he lost game one, but we'll see. This RP has not been teleported yet. Probably on to Elsie. Titan is getting nothing special. Yeah, there's nothing really special about what he's doing right now. He is just going for any old thing. He's going for economy. And... Oh, yeah, and J. Raccoon just double-checking. I guess he was aware... Well, like, we were aware that we figured out the problem before. And, yeah, it's going to be... The last game worked, so this is going to be vanilla 16-11. It's not going to be... And Monkey points out that... Okay, good. We are on the right version. It is not going to desync. We are fine. We are not in the modded version, so... Thank you, J. Raccoon, for having asked that. Because that actually helps me in the future. Thank you, past J. Raccoon, for doing that. Very considerate to future me. Well, present me, but future me back then. Very forward thinking, that man. Anyway, Monkuki is not going for heavy economy. Once again, he is going for. Okay, this is going to be an echo. This is going to be another echo. Monkuki can't be committing to this. He is attacking. He's going in with all of his infantry, but I doubt he's going to go for anything serious. I, I can't imagine he's going to go for a foundation rush attack and then go from there into some sort of powerful infantry battle, and that's not going to happen. What is going to happen is an Echo Scout. That's what we're going to see. They're going to walk in here, see what's going on, see what's been built, see Kitan's focus, which is clearly on Liquid Crystal. And Kitan, for his part, is back to the 42nd mark. No Q Plasma RPs yet. Or at all. Looks like he is just continuing to build LCRPs, not too worried about being attacked. He does want to see what's happening, though. Moving his Articus forward to scout out. Double checking. He's going to intercept these infantry, I think. And it's going to be in the tail end of, a site, of the Articus sight range. And yes, indeed. It, oh, wait. No. Oh, no. Yeah, it is. There it goes. It just barely sees it. So he does spot it in time. But only because they were being overly aggressive. Monkey only got that in because he basically didn't stop them from attacking. They went in. They saw it. They attacked. The only reason why it was spotted. But it looks like Monkey is echoing out the Zion Veer from that. Only leaving the Shin and Teth Veer. And likely won't matter too much. It wasn't going to be meant as a big attack. And Kitan is not taking it as such. He is continuing to build up regular economy. Getting an early reef. But no... Oh, there's an early Faro. Interesting. No early Q Plasma. You'd ex normally you get early Q Plasma when this sort of thing happens. And he does have some defenses just in case. Which will be quite effective. Against the scouting units. They are down. They're going to just be dead. There's no point worrying about them. Monkuki is getting his four RPs. Five RPs. One minute mark, five RPs. Yeah, that's reasonable. And Kaiden is at the 3 minute mark with 6 RPs and a Reef and enough for another RP, which is probably going to happen to this Octo once the Octo is done fighting this Echo attack. Although Kaiden, coming back to when he is at the 3 minute mark, the real attack is far less threatening and in fact really just a way of scouting out figuring what's going on. Seeing that a Reef is coming at the 3 minute mark, Monkuki fully aware of what Kaiden is going, that he's going for fast tech, not going for fast army instead. Kaiden is definitely, he's been playing for a long time and he's got a bit of the old timey habits in mind like early reefs which admittedly don't fail i mean they they work fine it's just that it's something that you see a lot more in the older pl player base i'm trying to remember who's double check who was playing last last we saw for grecan representation was vermind i believe but then vermind is not that old either well at any rate no, he's not that young either he's been playing for a while so titan is going to be Probably fine. Early Reef is still a little bit surprising, and Kitan is actually taking a fair amount of damage from the looks of it. Not too... No, ne never mind. He's dealing a lot of damage. He's taking very little damage. That's Monk who taking a lot of damage to his scouting forces, which he is keeping going. He's not echoing those out at all, and it looks like... Can he echo them out? Yes, he is. As the unplayable past edge approaches, he does echo them out, making sure that they don't die needlessly. And getting all the information he needs. Kitan's going for Early Reef. Good to know. And moving his Articus forward, which is also kind of an old-style thing, which... People don't do a whole lot of it. They mostly use it to tank. They don't usually use it to scout. Which isn't surprising given how slow it moves. But it's also very powerful. Once you get into your opponent's base, it's kind of difficult for them to dislodge. But yeah, because like I said, we don't see that all that often anymore. Not a very common thing anymore. But it's nice to see. Nice little throwbacks like that. Makes me wax nostalgic. As you can clearly tell. Foundation should be up for a depot at the 330 mark. That's the typical timing, so nothing unusual there. Kitan... Like I said, this is early. Normally players will go for Reef at about 4.30 or 5 minutes and then get Aryan for about the 6 minute mark. 
But no, Kitan apparently wants to get the healing first before worrying about getting air units. And that seems to be working out okay for him. We'll see how it works out in this game. I mean, last game was really a tough call because last game was a weird rush map. And last series, it did work out quite well for him, though admittedly, that was... That was also kind of heavy econ on both sides. Actually, that only really worked out because he did... He attacked the north because... Shardon had expanded to the north quite heavily. And when he attacked the north, that was quite effective. Because that was basically the timing that he needed to attack in order to get... Like, that was a perfectly timed attack in order to get rid of the RPs to the north to stop Shardon from expanding. Because Shardon was on the east side and Kyrton was on the west. So, I'm not sure how effective this early reef is, but really... It's probably not that problematic. And we will have Aryan. It's fairly early once again. Once these RPs are in place, or at least have harvested enough, a couple more RPs are likely to happen fairly soon. And a third reef. There we go. Full bubble wrap. Three R three reef bubble wrap. Not the modern two reef style. No, full three reefs. And Monkuki, on the other hand, not going for a whole lot of foundations. Going mostly. F well, he's getting an aerial control center at the 433 mark. He is definitely more on the ball, aware that he does need to worry about early tech from Kitan, early air from Kitan, and of course, early Pharopods needing detection. And Pharopods de are definitely what's coming up. Kitan is focusing on... He is focusing on his Q-Plasma. He is going to be building Pharopods, no doubt about it. And likely not building Sepipods first. In fact, I think he's going to have... I think he's going to have the resources for the Pharopod before the resources for the Sepipod. We'll see, though, and... No, it's about the same time. Actually, yes, Firepod was after, but Firepod is being built. That is what's happening. And a comm hub. Thank you, Monkey, for building a comm hub. I love it when people build comm hubs for scouting. Because comm hubs are awesome. Comm hubs, comm centers, mounds. I mean, just being able to scout like that, given the sight radius, I mean, he's going to see halfway into Chitin's base. He's going to see that Firepod, that's for sure. And Monkey, we're looking at this point in time. He is going to see that. Oh, okay, he jumped back slightly right before it was completed, too. Which is kind of unfortunate, but. Because Monkey was about to see that this far pot is under construction, just about. or under maturity. Just about to be fully matured. And. He cannot see it anymore. It is out of range. Actually, I think it might have only barely been in range to begin with. But still, he does see half the base. And it is going to move just slightly to make sure that it can see the entire base. I don't think these Octos can actually see it. They might be able to see it if it gets here, though. That's the only thing. These Octos, I think, will be able to. But they have expanded. No! Kitan's not going to see it. Kitan will not be aware of it at all. And Monkey, however, is not aware of this fire pod. He does have some prepare. He has He's prepared. He does have his preparations. He's aware that a fire pod is likely to come. And he's very right. It is likely to come. It is, in fact, coming. And its arrival will actually not be too problematic. Monkuki is prepared for this this time around. And Com Hub is up. He does see the entire base. He does see the spire. He's probably fully confident that Farpod is forthcoming, if not here already. And Kitan is none the wiser. At this point, Kitan seems to have no idea that there is, in fact, a Com Hub just keeping tabs on his base. And doesn't have an equivalent in Monkuki's base. If Arcticus, in fact, was echoed out. It never got... Ultimately, never was pushed forward to scout. Got echoed back, and... That being said, Chrono is under construction, so Kitan... After what that's done, he has a three-minute window. If he sees anything, it's going to be destroyed three minutes prior. That's how Chrono works. Especially for Grekum. For anyone else, it's more like two minutes, but for Grekum, it's full three. It looks like Monkuki is getting... Skip teleport on his Shin Turcher. Actually, getting skip teleport on everything he has. Going for a skip teleport attack on this map, that's not surprising. Given the size of the map, it's just that much faster to use skip teleport. However, I don't... I think he's just going to use it for a direct attack. I don't think he's going to use it for anything else. I think just a direct assault will be it. However, Firepot is coming in, and Monkey's suspicions have been confirmed. No dedicated anti-air at this point, but he does have the detection he needs... He does have the depot heal, and he is able to get rid of that Pharopod. Kitan does not have chronoporting at this point in time. In fact, Kitan's chronoporting is not there. Apparently got undermined or cancelled. There's no yellow in the timeline indicating research that would have been chronoporting. So Kitan is actually not as far along as I expected. And he is trying to go for it, but it looks like he did in fact get undermined. 
There we go. Okay, now he's got it. At the 8-minute mark, he is starting to get Corona Porting, and Monkey does have this window. He can attack right now. And that's what he's doing. He's attacking at this very moment. Trying to get rid of this Firebot, just chasing the Firebot, really. But that's also the perfect moment to attack to deal with Corona Porting. However, Corona Porting means time travel. Time travel means, of course, that even if... <laughs> even if he damages this, unless he actually destroys the reef building Corona Porting before it's finished, and even if he does... There's still a possibility that the Firepot's going to get Chronoported back to help out. Or that other units are going to get Chronoported back to help out. And I say even if it does, because, of course, the time was going to propagate that completion happening. This blue time wave means Kitan actually does have at least one time wave on which he can, or the wake of one time wave, on which he can Chronoport units. I don't know if it's going to take advantage of that. We'll see. That's really important, but if he does, that's going to make all the difference. And looks like... Okay, Monkey will give a look at this point of view. Because Monkey's point of view is the one that he's actually going to be trying to get himself out of attacking the Arcticus for no reason. Especially with the Zion Turchers. And this Shin Turcher moving back to heal up, but these Zion Turchers are still in a... They're still under threat. They cannot... I mean, they can't easily cloak effectively. Semi Buzz and Arcticus is in the way, stopping them from doing anything effective. That should have been teleported back. Actually, the Shin Turcher should have been moved slightly back so the Zion Turchers could have dealt with the Firebud. But unfortunately, that did not happen, and there are no... Well, there are some more units coming in. They do not have gate tech. Well, Monkey doesn't have gate tech, so they don't have skip teleport. And Corona Porting has been constructed. These units are definitely in place, and I think Titan will be able to go for Corona Port any time. Not sure, though. A little bit hard to say what he's going for. He doesn't have the... Oh, no. He's not going to go for it. He does not have the Q-Plasma to do so. He's going to be able to do it eventually, though. Within the next minute, he's going to probably go for a Corona Port. Possibly just to f finish that attack off even more decisively than he had before. Monkuki has a lot to deal with right now. And once again, having to deal with Corona Porting asymmetrically, this is not going to be easy. I mean, we saw that it's possible to beat Corona Porting without it, but it's not easy. And at this point, Kitan has a strong enough army that it's certainly not going to happen for free. Actually, at this point, I'm not sure what Monkuki is trying to do. I think Monkuki... He's just trying to command his forces as effectively as possible by pausing at the unplayable past edge, but that's, that is tough to do. When you do that, the amount of core energy required to do an action increases just because you're getting closer and closer to the unplayable past as you pause. Like the unplayable past is just shifting closer to you. But, Monkuki not worried too much about that. Kaiden is going for his assault pretty directly, and Monkuki is also going for a direct counter assault. Kaiden, I think think is going to win out on this one. I mean, Monkuki does have some defensive forces at home, but Kitan has Chrono Porting along with an army of his own as well, so I think like it's really going to matter, come down to Depot Heal versus Chrono Porting, and I think the fact that Chrono Porting exists, this attack force could be Chrono Porting back in order to reinforce itself, just to be that much more powerful. However, Monkuki going for a small expansion, getting a foundation in the north, southeast corner of the map, harassing away this expansion that Kitan has built up, and continuing to push towards it. Kitan does Chronoport back, however. He is Chronoport back some defensive, no, offensive forces. Getting this Farbot in and attacking before it is going to be, well, easily defended, I suppose. I mean, it's still going to be defended well enough, but this this Shin Turcher did not go into the depot. That was, that's bizarre. That should have gone in the depot, and I don't know if that was a mistake on Monkey's part or what, but that's going to be, that's going to stop it. That is probably going to just kill it right there, because there's that Shin Turcher would have been very helpful if it was going to live past two shots. As it stands, though, that Shin Turcher is basically dead in the water. There's nothing it can really do. I mean, 45 health compared to a Fire Pod, that's two or three shots. And Monkey is doing what he can, actually dealing a fair amount of damage here to the expansion. But Kaiden, once again, he can Chronoport back, I think, both of these... No, not quite both of these forces. Not quite yet, but very close to... And we will see... Okay, Monkey double, double checking this attack here. And yeah, this Shin Turcher is not healed. It is not in the depot. It is under heavy threat, and these QPRPs are basically down. Not much can really be done about that, and... That is kind of... That's pretty unfortunate for Monkey. I mean, this Ted Turcher trying to do what he can. It, it's trying to just dodge the attacks, trying to avoid getting hit, and it's doing a decent job of that, dancing around. But really, detection is what's necessary. And this foundation going down too, of no use, of no help. Unfortunately, Monkuki did lose a fair amount of LC on that. 
Especially since the, the Shin Turtles are going to go down. The QPRPs are already dead. And... Okay, now he's healed up the Shin Turtle, but that's probably going to be too late. That Farapod has probably already had its way with that Shin Turtle, and that's... That's not going to go well for it, unfortunately. However, that detection... If it comes in in time, I mean, Kitan really is a matter of how much damage he does. And he's done all the damage! My goodness, Monkuki has no base left. He has no economy left. His only... All he has left is these buildings and whatever he had in the bank, and that wasn't much. Monkuki going in for an attack here, but... That's really not going to do it, unfortunately for him. And the Sepipod seals the deal here with the Farapod in the main base, and I think Monkuki is just going to throw it. Rather unfortunate, must not have been really expecting Kitan style, because Monkey is a very powerful player for Vecchio, we've seen before, but... Kitan style was very quick on the air and very quick on the chrono porting. I'm not sure how many other players really do that. I haven't seen it that often. Like, that is not a common style. So, I can see how that would be hard to deal with, how it would be unpredictable. And ultimately, how that kicked Monkuki out of the tournament. And Monkuki, okay, I should, I'm hasty. Monkuki's not quite out yet. He does have a foundation. It's going to be difficult for him to rebuild in time, though. That's the one thing. But he does have foundations. He is buying himself some time, but he doesn't have any money. And he is GG. That is game. That is match. That is the loser's round four. Loser's bracket round four goes to Kitan. So Kaiden going to be playing whoever loses between Monkuki, sorry, between God and Cybernetic Pony. Monkuki solidly takes fourth place. Whoever loses between Kaiden and the loser of God versus Cybernetic Pony is in third. And then after that, it's going to be whoever wins God and Cybernetic Pony versus whoever wins Kaiden and the loser of God versus Cybernetic Pony. So one of these three people is going to win, and the other two are going to get the remaining two places. So it's really a matter of vying for what medal you get. Because Good Cybernetic Pony and Kitan are all medalists at this point. Like, we are in the very, very, very final home stretch of this tournament, people. It's like a few games left. As you can see, there's semifinals for Good and Cybernetic Pony, and then the loser's bracket semifinals, and then the finals, and then the loser's bracket, if the person who gets out of the loser's bracket wins then a second finals, just to double eliminate the person who's been undefeated in the winner's bracket this entire time. And that should be pretty exciting. So I'll have that for you guys when it's a, when it happens, or after it happens. And then the tournament will be closed, probably within three months of it starting, which is better than I had originally anticipated. I was expecting something more along the lines of, you know, next year. <laughs> As in, Christmas of 2014, it'd be done. But no, we are actually progressing at a fairly good pace. So I hope you enjoyed those series, and thank you all once again for watching. Actually, I don't think I thanked you before yet for watching today. Thank you for watching. Thank you again for watching. And have a good night, everybody.